All right, I got this uh, brand new CD09 from Collins Performance Technologies, one of my sponsors. Uh, I have here installed the S1 sequential shifter. Basically converts the CD09 to a sequential style transmission. The cool thing is, or some people might think it's not cool, but you don't have the loud whining noise of the sequential transmission with the straight cut gears. You still do have to use the clutch with this shifter, but we're gonna go over the install, so keep watching. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this shift linkage assembly. It is four bolts and there is a roll pin in here and it should come off. All right, so I got the roll pin out. Save this because you're going to need it to install a piece from the new shifter. So keep this. All right, next we're going to remove the four bolts. They're 12 millimeters. There's a bracket in the way here. Now, if you're swapping uh, into another car, you probably don't need this bracket. So, to remove the roll pin, you're going to need a 5/30 seconds punch as well. I'm going to remove these uh, extra brackets down here at the bottom since I don't need them. But obviously, if you have a 350Z, you might need them. But I won't. But we're going to get them out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove this boot for now. So at this point, we have to grind this so it's flat. So when we put the plate for the shifter on, it's, uh, it doesn't hit this. So we have to grind this flat. You can see that I just made it flat there. I didn't go all the way down into that ring. That's about all you need to do, not too much. Nothing like grinding a brand new transmission. All right, now we're gonna remove this plate. I left it on while we did the grinding, obviously, so we don't get a bunch of aluminum shavings inside the transmission. So, but now we have to remove it. Careful on the last bolt, there is a spring here. So. Put some pressure on there. Right. Go. You won't need this gasket either. Uh, you're gonna use a sealant instead. So now you wanna remove this spring here and there's a little check ball down there. Use this tiny magnet get it out Let's see so you won't need that so now we're gonna remove this piece here there's one on each side you'll need to remove both of them also there's a spring in there this piece out don't need the magnet but you basically you don't need this on either side I'm gonna take the other one out too as well that's basically for the H pattern the shifter will take care of the side to side movement so you won't need these all right so I'm gonna move this one now
and like I said, you won't need these, so you could save them if you want to convert back, but you won't need them for the shifter. Now what you will need is to reinstall these pieces. So obviously you don't want a bunch of fluid coming out. Alright, so now we have to remove this piece. And all we're going to do is install the uh, supplied washers underneath. I'm not exactly sure why they do this, but it was in the instructions. These are the two washers that we're going to install. Wipe this off. Should move freely back and forth now. We're gonna put some red grease on there just to help glide the next piece down. As you can see, there's grease on here as well. I've already had this in shif shifter installed on another transmission, so we're basically putting it on this brand new one now. You're gonna get it right to where you can see the factory hole. And this is when you're going to need your uh, factory roll pen. You just want to get that flush. And that looks good. Alright, so I got two of these. One reason why is because... I was one of the first to have the kits because I got the pre-order and I was like one of two people that tried to install it in a CDO one and if you look at the larger bolt holes in the back you'll see that these ones are elongated that's because uh, on this one it did not line up with the CDO one I guess the bolt holes are in a different position on the CDO ones because of the bushing type so they sent me out this piece, even though I told them I was gonna to swap to a CD09, so good part on them. It looks like I can use either piece, but I'm gonna use this one just because it's probably a little bit stronger for the CD09, and I know it fits, so. So uh, we're getting ready to apply the sealant, so we're gonna wipe the surface down first. Make sure there's no oil. All right, so I'm gonna use uh, Toyota sealant doesn't really, I mean, to a point it matters what sealant you use, but this works great for me. I'm sure you guys know of other sealants that work good as well, so. Alright, so I got my sealant on there and we're ready to put the plate on. Alright, so I almost forgot, uh, I'm going to put these washers too, they're spacers for the plate. I put a little uh, sealant on it just to keep them in place, helps. Seven bolts to install.
All right, so we have this piece we're gonna install. There's two sides. You wanna install the beveled side up. The next piece we're going to install is this, and like before, I this isn't required, I just put a little sealant on there to keep it in place because it will move. So we're going to set that down there. Alright, so we have the piece lined up, the sealant's on there to hold it in place. And next up, we're going to install the shifter mechanism. Alright, this is the shifter mechanism. This is probably the trickiest part about installing the whole thing. Uh, you want to look at this green piece down here that's the neutral position so you want to get the shifter in that position and obviously have the transmission in neutral before you install it so now we're gonna install it all right so you want to turn this piece while you're installing it And then you want to make sure this ball part lines up in here and put a lot of grease on this. All right, so the reason you're turning the piece is you want to get this piece here lined up with this while also getting the part of the shifter in that groove. So it looks pretty good. I might add a little more grease to it. Right, so there's four bolts to install the shifter to the base plate. Three of them are Allen's, and I think this one's a 12 millimeter. The others are a 6 millimeter Allen. They're three different sizes. They only fit where they should go. I was wrong. It's a 13 millimeter. Alright, this piece I already had installed, but it's basically to help support the shifter. Um, just two Allen bolts, bolts to the back of the mechanism. Um, there's also, I don't have the correct drill bit today, but they want you to drill two holes and then install two roll pins in there as well. So that way it definitely doesn't move. But it's in the instructions and it's fairly simple. You basically just drill holes and install roll pins. Alright, so for the purpose of the video, I'm going to install the shifter mechanism part. Um, it's much easier if you install the shifter while the transmission is out of the car, depending how cut open your trans tunnel is. If, you have, if it's cut wide open, obviously you'll have room to install it, but it's still going to make it harder. I highly suggest removing the transmission when installing the shifter. So I, I, at this point, I would install it the way it is now, but for the purpose of the video, I'm going to install the shifter and the reverse mechanism. So. But we're going to set it there, straight up and down. And it just basically tightens. Alright, so now we're going to install the shift now. Uh, they give you these uh, shims, basically, so that way you can get it so it's set up correctly on the shifter. I just looks like I just need this one. Um, I didn't show this part, but you have to install this stud inside the shift knob. But here we go. So you'll see there, perfect. The uh, backwards will be up shifting and up, uh, forward will be down shifting. All right, so this is the re uh, reverse lever. So this is also preference. You can just put it wherever you feel is comfortable. 
you would basically pull this and then pull the shifter back to go to reverse. So I'm going to install it right here. So that would be reverse. And then back to neutral, you would just go up. All right, so one of the last parts to install is this piece. It's gonna cover under here to keep all the dirt out of the shifter and the grease. So. All right, so you gotta apply a thin layer of sealer on this as well. All right, so we're going to install it on the bottom here. All right, so there you have it. Shifter is fully installed. Um, I also got the option for the shift sensor, which will go here. It's already installed in my car, so I'm not gonna do that in this video. But basically, it bolts here, and you program the indicator to the gear you're in. It's not like uh, some special sensor where it uh, just knows exactly what gear you're in. You have to uh, program it to each gear. So I'll drop a clip from my previous video to show how that works anyways to go to first so we're in neutral now go to first you go up so now you're in first so up shift I do this weird backhand everybody makes fun of me but the way my seat is I just can't do it normal so don't make fun of me or do second third fourth fifth Six, five, four, three, two, one, and neutral, half back. All right, so the transmission is in neutral right now. So we're gonna go through the gears. Um, once you're when you're in neutral, you're gonna to go to first. You just go up one. So that would be first gear, and then you would do second, third, fourth, fifth. Five, four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna go half back to neutral. All right, so why would you wanna buy this shifter? Um, for one, probably you're sick of missing gears. With this shifter, I've already tested it, there's like zero chance you're gonna miss on a like mid upshift during drifting. With all the other shifters I've tried, like Serial 9 and whatnot, no matter the shifter, I always had a problem downshifting or upshifting while mid-drift. And I'm probably gonna start to get into the comp competition side of things. And I don't want that to cost me a battle. Or if you're into road racing, you could lose a race because you missed the shift. So that's basically why it's consistent, it's reliable. I feel like it's the best shifter on the market for the CD09. All right, if you came to the channel just to see the install of the short version of the S1 sequential shifter, there is a long one as well for the 350Zs. Uh, drop a like if you would. If you want to uh, see more drifting stuff with my Turbo IS300, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more to come.